Let me start by painting you a quick mental picture. Imagine that the year is 1977, you are a graphic artist and a design brief lands on your desk to create a poster for this new movie, which is unlike anything anyone has ever seen before. It's sci-fi with a pinch of fantasy, also borrowing from westerns, as well as the samurai movies from the 50s. On paper it sounds like a bit of a mess. Before the age of the internet, designers and artists often times had to make stuff up on the spot, literally, to explain complex ideas such as the world of Star Wars, which might sound like a huge obstacle to us, the designers of today, but at the same time this lack of resources has resulted in an incredibly creative and brilliantly bizarre collection of artworks for these movies, which once I discovered I thought, well, we gotta talk about this, cause these, these need to be seen. Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. You are watching DMB's channel, my name is Laszlo, and today we're going to take a critical look at and rank some of the strangest Star Wars movie posters from all around the world. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, I thought, let's rate them on a 1 to 5 star scale, but let's give that a critical twist. On my 5 star scale, each and every single star is going to represent a very specific side, a very specific area of poster artwork design making sure that I'm being as objective as possible here. Okay? This is how it's gonna go down. We give a poster one star for its general aesthetics. If the overall layout and composition of the artwork makes sense, if the poster is legible and the viewer can easily decode and understand what's going on, it deserves at least one star, I think. Another star I'm going to give out for creativity. How original the idea is behind the artwork is being judged here. Is the image something unique? Is it something that we haven't seen before? That kind of thing. The third star I'm gonna give out for relevancy. Can you tell that it's a Star Wars poster we are looking at? Does it work with the original vibe and the world of Star Wars? Or is it stretching things a bit too far? Yeah? Star number four is going to represent craftsmanship. We need to judge the quality of the artwork itself. You know, how well it was made, no matter what technique has been used. And the fifth and final star goes out for marketability. A poster's main job, after all, is to sell a movie, right? So we need to feel excited about the project that is being advertised here in order to earn this star, yeah? Okay, now that you know the methodology, let's judge some of these hidden gems from a galaxy far, far away. Yeah? Now I thought I would ease you guys into this subject by starting my list with a poster that is not that strange, but still a lot of you probably have not seen it as this artwork for Empire Strikes Back was exclusive to Germany. All in all I think it ticks most boxes for me. The only star that I feel can be taken down is for the craftsmanship as these renderings of the main character, especially some of these faces here, could have been painted a bit better. I know that's a bit harsh, but the thing is when official artworks like these by Drew Struzan exist, well, the bar is really, really high, and these, for me, doesn't really compare. So yeah, four out of five stars. Next, please. Next one on my list is this Italian poster made by Michelangelo Paputta. Overall, I would say this is this is a great poster, actually. This comic book style drawing with the heavy black ink work and bold colors obviously makes the artwork quite subjective to individual taste. Personally, I quite like this illustrative style, but I understand some people might not. Yes, it's showing a little bit more skin here and there. These two main characters are a little bit overly sexualized, I would say. But then again, some US-based official artworks did the very same thing, so it wouldn't be fair to list that as a negative trait, would it? All in all, another four-star poster for me, as I think the style is steering the poster away from the original concept of Star Wars, so no star for relevancy. But yeah, I still like it. I like it a lot, actually. Okay, now we're talking. This is a poster from Hungary, and this is where things get a little bit of beat. Trippy is the word that comes to mind when you look at this painting made by András Felvidéki. Exciting concept and a great personal interpretation of what Star Wars means to this artist. I especially like how he have customized some of these iconic characters and kind of twisted them to his own artistic vision and taste. It feels like fan art before fan art was a thing, yeah? So yeah, the Star for creativity is definitely earned here. I would give it 3 stars out of 5, as I think the relevancy and the marketability sides of it are not as high as they could be. Bit weird, but yeah, really good effort. This next poster is from Japan, and looking at this there are two main aspects that we need to mention here. First of all, this very unique color scheme, this watercolor-esque purpley shades, 
are something that you don't really see in this context much. I think it's quite brave. It makes it different than most Star Wars themed artworks, and that's something that I can appreciate as a designer. But I do see how others might think it loses the relevancy point here. The other aspect is the heavy use of typography. There is writing all over this place, as you can see, which feels unusual to the Western eye, but I'm aware that it's a cultural difference. Countries which utilize the Latin alphabet that we use here in the UK, we don't tend to like to overuse writing, but in Japan people have a completely different attitude towards typography. As far as I'm aware, the Japanese welcome type-heavy design and having these, you know, undoubtedly beautiful letter marks put on everywhere. For westernized audiences, this poster would feel a little bit too busy. But for them it must feel pretty normal, so in that sense the poster is culturally very aware. So the marketing star is earned. But still, I can only give out 4 stars for this piece, because this next poster, from Turkey, is obviously utilizing the same base artwork, meaning that the composition is not unique to one specific country. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find out who painted the original composition, so if anyone knows, please leave it down in the description. As you can see, this version plays it a bit safer than the Japanese one, you know. It is referencing the classic US posters a bit more in terms of its overall look and feel. Making it less of a creative concept, I guess? Although the artwork I think is strong, as, as you can see it still works in this context too. Because of this, I can only give 3 stars to this one. Next slide, please. Okay, now this is from Poland and... Uh, hmm... Well... Okay, a range of different techniques are being played with here. We see this airbrushed, spray-painted background, which creates a great overall textured look with lovely base colors. And these stencil-based, inked-looking figures are quite alright as well, although they are a bit weirdly cropped, at least to me. I would have drawn more of this AT-80 AT Walker onto the composition, because heavy machinery with this graphic -y style could look quite nice. All these little colorful dots, circles and rectangles, I don't know. Personally, I don't think it does the poster any favors, to be honest. I guess they are supposed to be lights and buttons from the Death Star or something. And had they be painted white, I think that would work a bit better. Because in this form, somehow it just cheapens the overall design for me. But yeah, overall, you know what? Two stars. One for creativity and one for relevancy. Okay? Phew, now. This one. This one is from Russia and, uh, <laughs> well, I guess I can just kind of see how it probably went down. I'm guessing these guys have heard that this new movie is supposed to be a space western. An idea that they took quite literally, which resulted in this thing. To be fair, it is unlike anything I have ever seen before. For me, this is the so bad it's kind of good category. There is something charming about it and for the general creativity, I think it deserves that one star, okay? This is another Hungarian poster, where we see yet another very personal take on some classic Star Wars imagery. The overall composition is resembling some of those classic 70s painted adventure book covers, and I think, even though it looks a bit weird, it does actually work to some extent. All of this striking yellow gives great contrast to the dark foreground elements, and well, well, the elephant in the room is this little dragon-looking character with this steel sword, which admittedly is not in Star Wars, but somehow it was allowed to get in there because, well, it's the 70s baby and there are no design rules. For me, it deserves three stars. The two missing points here are for relevancy, because yeah, that dragon shouldn't be there, and for marketability. For the same reason, because hey, if you went to see this movie only to find that there is no sword-wielding dragon in it, well, that could be disappointing for some, I guess. Now, this is another poster from Poland, and quite frankly, there is nothing, I repeat, nothing that I like about this. In fact, the longer I stare at it, the more I hate it. I mean, none of this makes visual sense to me. We have this overall he-man resembling action figure toy packaging vibe going on, with the bold colors and all these randomly selected digital typefaces, and honestly, if it wasn't for the actors' names here, the artist left us no other clue whatsoever in order to let us know what on earth is this poster is trying to advertise. So yeah, to me, you know what? This is a zero star effort. Sorry, Poland. And last but not least, one of my favorites, this absolute, um, hidden gem 
of a Russian poster. Well, another hilariously bad interpretation of the original brief. I think this cat-looking thing with the lightsabers coming out of its head is supposed to be Darth Vader, I think. In a way this feels more fitting as a poster for Marvel's Black Panther, so I guess these guys were just ahead of their time. There is an ancient, almost caveman-like atmosphere going on as well, when you look at all these free-handed overall compositional elements. Which is again a very interesting take, but it does not feel relevant to the world of Star Wars whatsoever. So yeah, one star for creativity. And yeah, no other marks have been hit, for me at least. But hey, that's just my opinion, man. Now looking at this catalogue, some of you might have noticed the obvious pattern. The weirdest posters have come out of the Eastern Bloc, which I guess needs a little bit of a historical context. Back in the mid-70s when Star Wars came out, a big big chunk of Eastern Europe was still under Soviet rule, and at this part of the world, any Western piece of media was, let's just say, quite hard to find. American movies or music or products, these things were either frowned upon, heavily censored or downright just banned completely. And without official releases, people just used to find their ways and, you know, smuggled around in between themselves illegal copies of these aforementioned movies and such. Yeah? Meaning some of these poster designers probably have not seen Star Wars. Not even a single frame from any of these movies before they sat down to design these beautiful, beautiful posters. But in a weird way, as I said in the beginning, it was beneficial to their artwork in order to just let loose and create whatever the heck they wanted. It seems that the general opinion about movie posters online tends to be that they are all the same these days. This whole genre of design is quite tired, it's very template based, you see a lot of floating heads looking bravely into the distance, taking no artistic risks at all. So I thought it would be beneficial to some of you if I introduced you to all of these strange artworks, in order to show you that sometimes you need to look a bit further away to get inspired. You need to look behind in order to go ahead, that kind of thing. Yeah? Guys, I do hope that you enjoyed my little list. If you agree or disagree and you want to leave your comments down below, feel free to do so. Other than that, as you may know, we talk about graphic design, illustration, architecture, interior decor and design on this channel as well. We also just recently have started a Patreon account, so if you like what we are doing and you want us to keep going, we would love it if you checked that out. The tier list is still very much of a work in progress. Jacqueline and me are still bouncing ideas off each other in terms of what to include as packs and in which and that kind of thing. But again, if you want to contribute your ideas on what would you like us to share with you there, well, let us know and we'll talk it out. Please leave a like to help us reach even more people with this video and I hope to see you next time with some other cool and creative stuff, okay? Until then, see you guys!